My name is Susan Solomon, and I'm the Ellen Swallow Richards Professor of Atmospheric Chemistry and Climate Science at MIT. Well, receiving the Frontiers of Knowledge Award from BBVA in the climate change category is just uh, an astonishing, humbling experience. I mean, uh, it, it, it is so wonderful to see that our field is uh, of interest in this way. Excellent. Um, your research has helped the world understanding the interaction between human activity, atmosphere composition, and how it affects the climate. Can you explain this triangle to us in a few words? Well, our atmosphere has all kinds of different chemicals in it, and I've been fascinated by chemicals in the atmosphere ever since I was a child. I just want to understand what they do, how they affect our climate, and the fact that we're changing some of them through our own actions, to me, is just all the more reason to be interested in them as uh, not only a scientist, but also as a person. Uh, has it been difficult to coordinate the work of hundreds of scientists in the IPCC and conveying its message to the politicians? I worked with about 150 scientists involved in the fourth assessment panel report of the science group of IPCC, and it was an incredible experience. It was wonderful. I think what's great about working with scientists is that you can get people in a room, and no matter whether they speak Chinese or English or Spanish or German or whatever, you know, you can gather 10 different scientists from 10 different countries in a room and talk about science and actually come to a common conclusion, a common understanding about what's going on. That's the power of science. It transcends language, it transcends cultures. It actually gets us to the real truths in our natural world. And IPCC is quintessentially exactly those, those that pursuit of knowledge and truth. And conveying this message to the politicians? Well, it's a lot harder to talk with politicians than it is to talk with scientists, but uh, to their credit, I think politicians uh, generally are very interested in understanding what the science can tell them, and uh, they, they, they want to uh, at least get as good an understanding of that as they possibly can in order to, to, to make better decisions. It's a little bit frustrating sometimes as a scientist to see that you really have to work awfully, awfully hard to, to get politicians from all around the world to get to that same level of common understanding that you can get with scientists. But you get there. You really do get there because science provides uh, a form of discipline to diplomacy that they actually highly value. And, and uh, that doesn't mean they're necessarily going to take action. They have many other considerations that they have to take into account. And, uh, it's a complicated situation, but at least they have a, a common basis, and that's what we can offer to the world as a service. Are we doing enough politically to solve this problem? Um, actually, let's, can we back up and do that one again? Sure. Real quick. Uh, so the question again was, is it harder to talk to politicians? Yeah. It's really important that scientists interact with politicians uh, as, as much as, uh, as we can. I think by that discussion and that common understanding, we actually bring something to political uh, discussions that, that, that strengthens the base from which they can begin. We're not going to, to write the ending for them. The, the politicians have to do that themselves. But whenever a society is making a decision, science isn't the only factor that enters in. It isn't uh, uh, necessarily sufficient, but it is always, always necessary in any environmental issue. And I, I think it's very important that we do that. Are we doing enough politically to solve the problem? Well, uh, the um, issue is a complicated one. I guess from my perspective, the, the more important thing than the politics in some ways is the way that we deal with engineering and innovation, which is in a sense also a, a, a political issue. But from, from my point of view, it's uh, putting, getting people interested in new technologies to either recapture carbon dioxide and put it back in the ground, or to use alternative forms of energy that uh, don't emit carbon dioxide. It, there's a tremendous amount of focus on engineering and innovation in this world, and it's that bottom-up process that I actually believe will lead us to uh, a better future. I, I'm, I'm deeply concerned about ensuring that we put enough attention on that. We all want a cleaner future, 
so I think we could agree on that. I think the focus on a technology policy is actually uh, the first thing we ought to be looking at and thinking about. The diplomacy, the international agreements, those are important, but actually t to my eye the technology is even more important. Thanks, Paul. Uh, is there anything you care to add? Um, From your own thoughts, this isn't a, anything that's in a question. Yeah. Um, you know, what's great about doing atmospheric science is that it's uh, a planet, planetary issue. You're really dealing with things that uh, transcend any one country, um, any one society. You're, you're learning about the world as a whole. And I find that endlessly fascinating. And I find it wonderful to be able to talk about those results with, with, with ordinary people of all kinds, with children. Uh, people are actually deeply interested in the atmosphere. They want to understand how it works. So just the natural curiosity of people is where I think we can start a good conversation. We don't have to, I think, be distracted by the politics. There's so much we can agree on in the science, and there's so much that's fascinating in the science. It depends on the state. Thank <laughs> you. 